Welcome to the Earth Feels Podcast. I'm Rose. And I'm Christine. Welcome to Earth Feels, the podcast for people feeling overwhelmed by the endlessly gloomy climate news. Where every week we have soul-based conversations about climate change and explore the idea that climate change may be happening for us as much as it is happening to us. If you are ready to shift your focus and secure the future for our kids and our grandkids, then this is the podcast for you. And yes, we do know how to spell. (laughs) Today's question is, what is the Greta effect? We've talked about Greta Thunberg before. Now we know how to pronounce her name uh, correctly. It's not T-H, it's Tun because she's Swedish. And that's how they pronounce it. Um, so what is the Greta effect? People are talking about the, the Greta effect. A couple of days ago, uh, my husband and I made a presentation to a group of teachers about climate change. We've been invited to, to talk to them. And when I asked who in the room knew who uh, Greta Thunberg was, half of the hands went up. And I thought that was pretty impressive nice. because, yeah. yeah, yeah, I presented to uh, groups of teachers before and um, a lot of them are pretty fuzzy on what climate change is. And I don't think that they would have been able to identify any, anybody except the, except possibly Al Gore, who's kind of uh, the poster boy and also the whipping boy for climate mm-hmm. change. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so exactly. yes, Greta is... 16 now. She was 15 when she started school strike for climate on the in front of the Swedish parliament and she was by herself. And now uh, there's a picture out there and let's make sure we post it if we can as long as it's legal. The picture of her sitting by herself in front of the ledge with 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 her school strike for climate sign Mm -hmm. all alone and then the tens of well, actually hundreds of thousands of people walking the streets. I don't know mm-hmm. if the picture is New York or London or where, wherever it's it actually, is. It's actually, I posted it a couple of weeks ago, but I will, will include it again. Um, it, it's actually an article, and I believe the article is from The Guardian. And okay. it shows the two pictures juxtaposed mm-hmm. with each other. And yeah, her like looking forlorn and sitting there by herself. And I'm sure people walking by her and thinking, you know, what's this yeah. young girl doing and why, is she, why isn't she in school? which obviously people are still saying, why isn't she in the school? But um, we know what she's doing. Right. And I mean, she talks about her Asperger's uh, very clearly. And she calls it her superpower. Mm -hmm. Well, it gives her the ability to focus, doesn't it? The ability to focus and to completely disregard what other people think of her. Mm -hmm. Isn't that exactly what's what's needed we, I, last time we talked about having a climate change conversation and how hard it is because we're we're uh, worried about having difficult conversations and uh, you know we don't want being, to offend somebody or we don't want yeah 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 not an issue for her and no. so she's very direct and she just the facts ma'am kind of kind of thing she Mm -hmm. knows the science and uh, she is holding the leaders feet to the fire whether it's in Europe or at home in Sweden here in Canada she met Justin Trudeau our prime minister at least he's the prime minister for now we'll see there's a federal election coming up in a few weeks I'm hoping for a minority government, that would be the best option. And he has a chance, good chance of still being our prime minister then, but he, it won't be a majority, I'm pretty sure. You heard it first here, folks. <laughs> <laughs> well, she didn't meet with our president, but she met with our, our favorite president. Oh, yes. That was Mr. Obama. Yes. yes. Of her, because she did, they did pass each other, Trump and Greta, mm-hmm. at the UN. With the glare, yeah, glare. I saw that. It's more of a stare, like like uh, it, it didn't look like she wanted to strike him down or anything. It's just, um, yeah, she has no use for uh, leaders who won't lead on this issue, mm-hmm. and that's that's what that face looked like. But it was interesting. Mm-hmm. She was asked at a news conference 
Yeah, in Canada, because she came up for the Montreal climate strike on September 27th, where I think they had 500,000 people out. Wow, for, incredible. For Montreal. Um, mm -hmm. Quebec tends, Quebec and British Columbia tend to be the most climate concerned provinces. Um, well, I can see BC because obviously, you know, coastal and Victoria, you know, mm -hmm. could be gone. Mm hmm. Hey, don't say that. We own a house in Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely there. It's beautiful there. But yeah, I, I mean, any, I think any place we're, it's coastal. I think we're a little higher up our houses than than uh, your houses, because that is one thing, being a climate activist that I did bring up with my husband when we were buying property on the island. But now we digress. Sometime we should we should talk about why Quebec is is in there. They're as progressive on climate change as BC, possibly even more so. And if I had to hazard a guess, it's because they don't absorb the mainstream North American media because their language is French. So they're mm -hmm. not exposed mm -hmm. to the nonsense on Fox News the way the rest of us are. Even if we don't watch it, it's just in the air in a way <laughs> here where it just isn't in Quebec. But where was I? So she was asked specifically, what did you say or what do you want to say uh, to Mr. Trudeau? And I thought her answer was really very, well, diplomatic, but also really right on in that she said, yes, he has a lot of power and he could be doing more on this issue. But she, she did say, it's too easy to single out one person, one leader. Mm. and uh, that's really not not the answer we all have to change and I thought that is so true because as a climate lobbyist with Citizens Climate Lobby I've gone to Parliament Hill I've met with members of Trudeau's cabinet and they tell me this very smart young woman who was the deputy speaker in the House of Commons at that time said looked at all eight of us or 10 of us in the room. And she said, all of us in here understand the importance of climate change. But she said, out there on the street, if you talk to people, they will not be concerned about climate change. So that was her excuse. That was the government's excuse. Interestingly, this was back in 2016, I think that I had that conversation. And that is true. But at yet at some point, governments have to lead as well. But I think what is happening with the climate strikes is it's making it easier for the governments that want to lead to lead. Does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, it does. I think um, I, I had looked at a statistic not that long ago um, here in the States, and it showed essentially what you're talking about. You know, for politicians, the top 20 things I think climate's like 18. If there's jobs and healthcare and yada, yada, yada at the top, but environment is at the bottom. And so they don't feel like they need to address it because their constituency isn't clamoring for that. But what we've seen in the last few weeks um, with 7.7 .7 million people coming out globally is that, yes, we do care about it. And um, we are looking to our leaders to lead. And if they're not going to lead, then people are going to be in the streets demanding that they lead or, or boycotting companies. I mean, there's many, many different things that we can do, but it, it's getting louder. And, um, and that's a good thing. That's yes. A great thing. It's, it's about time. I mean, um, in Citizens Climate Lobby, they would talk about how we're going to create the parade that the politicians can get in, in front of <laughs> <laughs> and take credit for yeah which is fine who yep. cares we don't care as long as it gets done e know? exactly so yeah. i guess if you had to define the greta effect rose what would you add we've had this conversation before obviously she's not the only one who has been working towards climate change and she is not the only youth who's been working towards climate change but somehow, and, and this goes, to me, this is a spiritual thing. She's just appeared. She's like an angel that's walking on earth, 
for us. She's just, maybe that sounds really too woo for people, but she has come in at this time and just appeared and, and helped gather momentum. Now, why a 16 year old Asperger's woman, young woman, can garner that kind of um, notoriety, I don't know. But it's, it's amazing to see it, right? It's an, it's, I mean, she's like a Gandhi in young female form. She's, she's holding all of us accountable. And maybe because of her youth and because of her disability, if she can do it, how can you look at her and say, I can't do, I'm not, I can't do anything. What difference can I possibly make? She's making the difference. She's mm -hmm. making a huge difference in her one person that Margaret Mead, don't ever doubt that one person can't make a difference because in effect, I, I'm paraphrasing it, mm -hmm. butchering it at, at the same time, but, <laughs> but in effect, it's the only thing that ever has made a difference, mm -hmm. one, you know, and so she's doing it. Um, I think she um, she holds us all responsible to do our share. Yeah. And whether and you're a CEO of a company or whether you're a mom putting out your recycling, doesn't matter. You can still do what you can do. And yeah. she's expecting you to. Yeah. Our and youth I, are expecting you to. And I would like to underscore, too, how many other people, how many indigenous youth in particular uh, uh people of color i mean she's she's standing on their shoulders actually she's standing mm -hmm. she's standing side by side with them in montreal mm -hmm. at the climate strike her input was that she wanted indigenous youth and indigenous leaders on the stage with her mm -hmm. and because so, this is because this is a knowledge that they embody exactly like that, that white man that civilized man has has uh squashed and but the the indigenous have held the space and the wisdom they still have it and how to, as, how to react with mother earth and as she said they're also disproportionately affected mm, by mm -hmm. climate mm -hmm. impacts certainly in the alberta oil slash tar sands Mm. Um, mm. that's all First Painful. Nations territory and there are I've I've been there I was there in 2014 and had conversations uh, with women I believe it was from Fort Mackay First Nation who told me that they number one they have water trucked in every day mm. because mm. their water is too polluted to drink mm. One grandmother told me her grandkids can't swim in the lake in front of uh, her house because they get rashes, they get sick. So uh, all of that Northern Alberta area that's being mined and exploited for, for oil is First Nations territory. Mm -hmm. And they are suffering because of mm -hmm. it. So, mm -hmm. so again, symbolically, I thought it was really significant that they were up on stage with her. I don't know if you saw any of the clips. It was quite lovely. They, uh, the indigenous leaders uh, and the youth um, presented her with different gifts. Didn't they present her with some kind of a, an in, a vest? A vest, yeah, some yep. kind of a garb. Yeah, no, that was, that yeah, was yeah, one of them. But she also got a uh, bracelet that had a wolf on it and the young woman who presented her told her sort of about the significance of the wolf and uh, yeah it was it was lovely for me that is Greta modeling how we go forward first of all by mm -hmm. pointing out that she's not calling out Justin Trudeau as the only one who's failed on climate action that it's that, that that's too too much an easy way out and second of all having the indigenous people up on the stage with her that's how we move forward yeah it, it has to be um so it's not a it's not a political thing it's it's um and and it's i think we need to have forgiveness for each other and and move forward from this point because we're none of us were without sin right now none what do you mean are. it's not a political thing i don't i don't think it's a republican or a democrat in our country i think mm -hmm. i don't think it's i don't think it's part of the political um it's being 
uh, presented that way, that maybe there are more climate deniers who are Republicans than there are Democrats, but certainly um, there are Republicans that care very much about what's happening to their grandchildren or the, the land for their grandchildren. I, I think we have to get beyond the politics and the divisiveness of it and figure out a way that pointing fingers at somebody like with Greta saying, you know, she, there's, there's too many, she can't single out just one person. We've all been to blame. We have to let go of that. We have to move forward with it. I don't know. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I mean, I would say, having said it's not political. Um, well, it shouldn't be political. Maybe, maybe that's a better way of saying it is that we have to, um, unless you're a climate, unless you're a climate denier, and I don't just can't wrap my head around how people can be in denial of what's happening everywhere. Um, I, maybe it has something to do with, you know, um, people are climate change. Well, you know, we still have cold days and we still have warm days and we have hotter days. And hey, my husband has a colleague who's a, he's a physician, he's a climate denier. And in fact, my, Mark was ta talking recently about a study he, he saw, which the information says whether you recognize climate change is real or not has nothing to do with your IQ, your education level. And this is probably an American based study. It has to do with which political party you're affiliated with. Mm. Well, if you're, if you're not a critical thinker. But it also has to do with if you are affiliated with the party that's to the right of center, mm -hmm. if, if that's the websites that you go to, that ends mm -hmm. up influencing what comes into your Facebook feed, what news items you watch. And, and so, yes, it has to do with critical thinking, but it's this whole strange world that we're in now where we can pretty much exist in completely different realities depending on mm -hmm. our own echo chamber yeah and but, that's where but that's worldwide i mean that's whether it's brexit or whether it's the amazon or wherever it is it's the right the farther right uh have a tendency to be more climate deniers is that true i i would uh, i would say so is and it because they don't, they don't, that they don't want business, uh, they want profit before anything else, jobs before anything else? Is that, and they ha have a tendency to be more business oriented than, I don't know. We're getting off the subject of Greta. Yes, let's talk about Greta. But actually, I, I think we should talk about uh, that right-left uh, divide at some point, but not today. Okay, okay. Uh, but yes, uh, getting back to the Greta effect, I was going to read this article because it's not just you and I talking about the Greta effect. There's an article in Bloomberg from, hmm, I'm looking for the date. Well, I don't see it, but um, it just came out because it says, uh, the headline is Greta effect shakes up Austrian politics in signal for Europe. And it says two days after rallying 7 million protesters across the world by invoking the threat of climate change, Greta Thunberg got credit for motivating voters to redraw the political landscape of Austria. And so what happened was that the Austrian Green Party, which had kind of been languishing but three or four uh, percent, just won 14 percent of the vote. Wow. Which, yeah, which means that in the way the Austrian system works, they are now, uh, it's very likely to be part of the governing coalition. Awesome. Yeah, so yeah. that will yeah. have a huge impact. There's a quote, uh, the, the leader of the, the Greens, and interestingly, the majority government is pretty much to the right, although not as far right as the Freedom Party in, in Austria. I love the names that they give these parties, the Freedom Party, but yet they're not, <laughs> stand, they don't stand for freedom. The whatsoever. opposite, the opposite. It's mm. that so Orwellian <laughs> party chief. So that's Green Party chief, Werner Kogler said he's ready to negotiate with Kurtz, who is the leader of the party that got them the most votes, quote, as long as protecting the climate is at the center of politics. Well, so, it has to be. 
Yeah. Because there's no, there's no jobs if there's no planet. I know, but, but getting it into the mainstream. And so that's what Greta has done. She's made the conversation mainstream. I wonder also how many, uh, how many of our youth, you know, they're, they're looking at somebody their own age who's inspiring and are they coming at home and having their conversations with their parents and their grandparents? Because I think kids, kids have that ability to influence in, within their own family. I probably couldn't uh, influence someone my age as much as their child could influence them. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, absolutely. So I think that's part of, I think that's part of her, the Greta effect as well, is that kids are seeing that she's done this. It's okay to step out and speak truth to power, whether truth to power is your school principal or your congressman or your mom or dad, it's okay to speak truth to power. And, um, that's, that's a pretty exciting. Well, if you think about the, just in the last year, the young people that stepped up after Mm -hmm. that shooting in Florida, the Parkland shooting, they again, like Greta were viciously attacked Mm -hmm. uh, for Mm -hmm. it, but they spoke truth to power and they they continue to so i do feel um last time we talked you mentioned uh, that your spiritual director talked about somebody he knows who's excited about climate change because of the possibility it opens up for really Par- large- paradigm change paradigm change yeah, yeah. so uh, these young people seem to be leading us great well they're not they're not so entrenched in a system that that's the way it's always been so that's the way we do it i mean they're like well so that's the way it's always been so what it needs to change so when you think so i'm i'm too you and i are too young to have oh um, i love that thought (laughs) been actively involved in the uh nine the 60s Mm -hmm. which was kind of that that way as well the young people led the protests against the vietnam war in question authority question authority that was their motto anybody over 30 we don't trust them yeah i actually had when my daughter was a year old i got a little t-shirt for her that said question authority but then my i felt crushed when my brother's girlfriend said question authority just ignore authority so i'm like (laughs) Okay. All right. You're not as cool as you think. Apparently not. <laughs> so we'll see. But but thinking about that 60s wave, that, you know, what came after was the Reagan 1980s, mm. which was that swing to the, the right, that, that conservative, that idea that uh, making we all got money. Lulled. We all got lulled into, yeah. Yeah. So, but it feels like the pendulum is swinging the other way, represented Mm -hmm. by Greta and again, the, the young people. So let's name some, I'm bad with names, but, but Mm. some of the other young people. So, well, there's the, there's the group of um, 15 young people, Juliana versus the United States that are suing the United States um, because they say that they have a right to a future. And it's, it's in the courts. I mean, it's, it's been delayed and back and forth, but there's 15 young people. And actually, I guess there was a picture of Greta standing alongside them. 15 young people who, um, who are, are suing the government because they're saying you're screwing with our future. You know what? That's that's not right. That's happened in Amsterdam as well. I thought they recently won. Really? I believe so. Huh. Yeah, a novel Dutch lawsuit demands government cut carbon emissions. That's from uh, the 20. So Shell hit with Dutch climate lawsuit. Shell faces lawsuit from climate change activists over fossil fuels. So these are all 2019. Well, so the kids thing is um, here in the States is the Juliana versus United States. It's called Our Children's Trust. Mm. And um, 
they're they're basically saying i, I want to say there's 15 of them that that they're basically saying that their constitutional rights uh that that the government's actions that cause climate change it, it's violated their constitutional rights to life liberty and property and it's sounds very protect, american and and it's failed to protect essential public trust resources so um the the fossil fuel industry of course is up in arms about it and uh and trying to have this, the case dismissed but um, but it's still out there and it's been going on, I want to say since like 2015 at mm -hmm. some point. And it keeps, uh, it keeps advancing, progressing. Keeps exactly. Advancing. Yeah. Um, and, and then they, you know, then they shut it down for a while and they have to do some more research and yada, yada, yada. But those kids, I mean, again, banding together, strength in numbers. Um, although Greta really stuck out on her own. Um, be, it would be interesting to know, like, so she was sitting there by herself one day two other people came and then day one day five other people came i would love to know like the the, the series of events how i how i it yeah transpired there is her story is out there i understand that i mean she was almost like she was very very depressed for a, a year or two about climate mm -hmm. change like like it really before it, she took action right exactly when she took action she got and started by getting involved with um, other climate change groups, and so she suggested the school strike for climate, and nobody else was interested. So she did mm -hmm. it by herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which takes and, such courage. Yeah, such courage. Absolutely. I'm sure we'll uh, we'll be speaking about Greta again. I hope so. I don't think she's going anywhere. No, thank goodness. Although she wants to go back to Sweden. <laughs> but she's stuck in the u.s for now um because she can't sail back in the winter is that i'm i'm not sure stay tuned maybe she'll come to boston that would be cool yeah that yeah would be cool. well you know that arnold schwarzenegger is loaning her an electric car yeah i saw that it's great and I he's think, a republican yeah exactly oh. exactly he's a republican he's a republican who married into the kennedy family though so. <laughs> probably kind of a centrist republican but nevertheless mm -hmm. yes so do we want to talk about the good news the good news i wanted to talk about is the eu approved groundbreaking new right to repair laws requiring appliances to be easier to fix so i think we've all probably experienced like the minute your warranty is out on your microwave or your dishwasher refrigerator or whatever then um then it goes out you know your warranty is up and your appliance goes out and it's so costly to have it repaired maybe more costly than it is to buy a new one so and this method of planned obsolescence and you know keep the gdp going uh buy a new one and throw away the old one and what happens to that old one you know it's a carcass that's sitting in garbage somewhere more garbage yeah. So the EU has has determined that um, it has to be easier to get these things fixed at, in an effort to reduce their their carbon footprint and make energy bills cheaper. Um, they just said we've got to we've got to be able to have these things be able to be repaired. Love it. And less so, yeah. less pollution, less carbon emissions, win win, and cheaper Absolutely. for cheaper for consumers. So what's Absolutely. our what's our action tip? As a mm. as a follow up to the climate strikes in September, this is going to be out in October. Uh, we were going to suggest that uh, listeners follow up with a climate group in their community. Yeah, and it can be like 350.org or or um, Citizens Climate Lobby or Climate Reality. There's a there's a bunch of different groups. Go out and find if you're if you're feeling passionate enough to even be listening to us. Then, then hopefully we've tweaked you enough to want to make a, a bit of a difference. And it's always easier to make a bit of a difference if you have a tribe with you or if you're a part of a tribe. So we'll, we'll list some other organizations that, um, that are doing good work and that are doing work locally in your community that you can help out with. Great. And our sanity tip for today is, it comes from my experience 
And Rose, you have permission to check with me next time we talk. Have I actually done this? But I was, we had a slight break in our recording and I started unsubscribing to emails mm. that I've been getting for so long and I just delete anyways. And so it's a bit of Marie, the Marie Kondo effect in your inbox. <laughs> delete, delete, uh, clean up your, your emails. I will confess right now on my cell phone email account, there's over 3,500 emails, which most of them are not unopened. personal, unopened. Oh. <laughs> but they're, they're not personal. So I've got some work to do with unsubscribing. I need to get off some newsletter lists because that's <laughs> ridiculous. So that's what I'm going to do. And I think that will feel really good. It will um, empty my inbox. I think it'll help declutter some of my mental clutter. Uh, it feels, definitely de-stress. Yeah. de-stress. So there you go. Unsubscribe along with me and I will uh, report back the next time we chat. Of course, if I delete them all now by the next time we chat, even if I unsubscribe, I'll probably have 2,000 in my inbox. 2,000 is better than 3,600. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. That's this week's episode of Earth Feels. Special thanks to singer-songwriter Kristen Hoffman for generously allowing us to use song for the ocean. Thanks for listening. Don't forget, subscribe to our podcast on iTunes or Google Play so you don't miss an episode. Catch you next time. Bye-bye. Children of the earth, I'm calling out. There's a mission for you and for me. You see, your mother, she has been suffering. Then the truth is told beneath the sea. So raise your voices.